Ruben, you are the uh, director of SIAD, the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, and right now you are joining us from the Tropentag, uh, which has a focus on resilience in agriculture. What have been the main achievements in terms of resilience with regard to food security in the last years? And where do you see SIAD's contribution in this? That's a um, very, very good and tough question. Uh, let me say first that um, all the work the SIAD and the sister centers in the CGR have been doing is very, very much related to the mandate of this global platform for rural development. We, we are doing research for development, and so I want to reinforce that idea that we are not an academic uh, consortium of centers doing just science. But we, are, we are very focused on applied research for development. So uh, I, I would say that the main area where CIA has made a major contribution to resilience has been on the soil uh, research area. We are the only center, we are one of the four founding centers of the CGR, so we've been around for 45 years now, and we are the only center who has uh, quite a large research capacity on agronomy, soil, and the connection to water and landscape. So uh, about 15 to 20 years ago, uh, a soil institute called TSBF was merging to see it in Africa, so we've been working for about 15 years now in this new soil research area. Uh, a major effort on that research is to improve soil fertility, which is the only way we believe that you can add resilience to a system which is already quite degraded by long, many long tradition of agriculture, over agriculture, agriculture. So um, I would say the soil research area here has been the major contributor to resilience. A second area that is a, a little newer area, but it's also an incoming young and energetic area of research is the, all the climate change adaptation and mitigation that, and the policy related area that we are doing at CIA. We are leading the global uh, program on the CGR on climate change, agricultural food security. And there we are doing all the research on the foresight, on the scenarios, on the hotspots. So in addition to working at the very ground level on soil, we are also looking at the global level on the foresight and the, and the look on the next 20 to 30 years. And the connection that we have with the genetic, with plant breeding and plant genetics, we, we have at here three gene banks of the 11 gene banks of the CGR. We've been doing work on rice, beans, and many other crops. It makes a great connection since we have the soil kind of data and information. We have the global scenarios on climate, and we also have the genomes, the plants that we would like to adapt so they get ready for the next 20 years to have a much more resilient uh, farming system. So we, we we are a very small center, of course, and very humble, but we think we can contribute a lot to, to rural development together in this global program. Yeah, we, we heard already that CIAD is a CGIR research center, and the, in the last year, CGIR's Commission on Sustainable Agriculture and Climate Change, CTAS, launched a report which was co-funded by the Global Donor Platform, which got some major public attention. And that commission had seven recommendations how to achieve food security in the face of climate change. How did these changes um, change the way your organization is designing it, its research projects? That the environment community, the research community, the science community on environmental issues is a huge community, much larger perhaps than agriculture. However, that community has been some way disconnected from the agriculture food security community, which is the one I belong and the CGR belongs. So the beauty, I think, of the major impact of the recommendations that you mentioned to our program has been to try to really connect in one global program, all of the different groups that, as you know, they seem to be very fragmented. There are all good people doing great research, but if we don't get all together, the tsunami, as I call, of, of huge challenges coming to hit us in the next 10 to 20 years, we are not going to be able to address those challenges if we are fragmented. So the recommendation that we are following from that, 
that re report closely is to connect climate change, adaptation and mitigation, agriculture and food security. And those three need to be connected. So the program, that's why it's called CICAP, the acronym reflects that recommendation to really integrate the environmental science, the agricultural science, and the food security developmental challenges all in one program. So for instance, the, the program has four themes. And if you look at some of the, your seven recommendations, you will see a lot of familiarities on the way we have organized those four themes. So I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to say that the, this accountability one-to-one, -one, that we're following exactly the recommendation, but I see a lot of similarities on the way we have organized based on that consensus. We have a first theme on ad adaptation to climate change. There's a lot of plant science to be done to adapt plants to two degrees, to change not only in temperature, but in water patterns and so on, weather and water. Uh, there's a second major theme of mitigation, another one on risk, vulnerability and risk, and another one of integrated methods. The CGIAR forms a global partnership on agricultural research, seeking sustainable development and food security. It does this research in close collaboration, obviously, with donor institutions, which provides substantial funding. Where do you see room for substantial improvement? How could donors make the collaboration more efficient from your point of view? Yeah, the CGR is very small. We, we have uh, about 4,000 scientists uh, distributed in the 15 centers, but the portfolio of the research is very, very broad. You go from tilapia to trees, from rice, to beans, cassava, and soy, you know, to food policy. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, huge portfolio. That's why the $850 million budget of the CGR to us seems it's a, it's a very good budget. We're very thankful to donors for that budget, but we think that given the challenges and the programs that we have put on the table, we, we may be able to increase, perhaps hopefully double that budget uh, in the near future. So the donors, um, uh, have been doing a great job. The donors are funding all of this great work. I see two two potential avenues for improvement. One is on the harmonization of donors on priorities. Uh, it's very hard. I used to be a donor before, and I understand that every country or agency has its own priorities and templates and requirements. However, again, we are not going to address the huge food security challenges of having nine billion people with less water, less land, and all the energy-related challenges that we have in the next 20 years, if we are not harmonized. So I would think that the donors could do much more harmonization among themselves to see if they can reach, and perhaps your platform can help us, all of us, to, to have a platform for donors to dialogue a little more and say, can we agree on five major priorities instead of in 20 priorities? If the donors do that, then the scale of the funding will increase for the major themes, and we are going to scale up our impact. So that's one area that the donors already know, and they, they are working on harmonizing. The other one is that we only have been working with the more developmental, great donors related to agriculture, but how about the rest of the world? Uh, I'm talking about the environmental, I'm in Germany now, and I can see a lot of action in the in environment here in Germany. Well, perhaps that's another source of funding. If we are talking about climate change, we should not only be funded through agriculture, but it could be the environmental areas, uh, also the science and technology and education and research areas. So if you, if you look at the budget globally, agriculture is not a big budget, but education, research, science and technology, and environment is a major area. So if we can, again, thanks to perhaps this interview, many more interviews that you can do, if we can spread the word that the CGR is not only working in agriculture, but it's working on environment, energy, and mainly on focusing on people, then we have other sources of funding. And the, the second area, so you can harmonize better what we have. You can improve the public sources from other huge things like environment. But the third area, very important, is the private sector. So we have been working quite a bit in the CGR to improve these famous public-private partnerships. So we are partnering with many private companies, small and medium companies, seed companies, 
uh, agribusiness companies. In order to have an impact, we shouldn't be substituting for national programs, working on the field, trying to be extension, because we are the CGR. We, we, we should be doing complementing what others are doing. So we think that the private sector, without uh, without the private sector, we are not going to be able to have an impact. So we are leading we are leading quite a bit of uh, work on that at CIA. We have a science park at CIA with 10 companies already on board in Colombia, but we are trying to do the same in Africa and hopefully Southeast Asia. So the private sector, the new sectors in the public domain, and the harmonization of the current donors will be, to me, the way ahead. We've been talking about um, the um, the collaboration parts already. Now the donor platform is is working on a on a synthesis paper which is called Donor Methods to Prioritize Investments in Agricultural Research and Development. Um, there, one of the recommendations that is coming out is that the CGIR should do more priority setting from their own side in their relation to the donors. Do you see any way how CIAD could go into that direction or any of the other centers? So now that's a very, very relevant issue. And with the CGR has, we have, for the first time ever, we have a one strategy. We used to have one strategy per center, which is good. But now we have one strategy for the entire consortium centers called the Strategic Results Framework. And in that document, which is a public document available in our website, it's a recent document, um, we have four priority areas, four priority areas, which is food security, poverty, health, and nutrition. Very important. I didn't mention in the other sector, the health and nutrition sector, and, of course, natural resource management and environmental issues. So those four, we call them strategic objectives, but those are our four main priorities. Within those four priorities, we have organized ourselves into 15 global programs to address those four priorities. So I would say that the CGR is coming much, much better than in the past. I've been associated for many years with the CGR, and this is the first time that we have a solid document with four priorities, which is hard to reach consensus among thousands of stakeholders, mm -hmm. with 15 programs well-funded to address those four priorities. I would say that CIAT, we, we, we have done a lot of priority setting at CIAT to focus our research, and uh, we are improving a lot our impact assessment and ex-ante foresight type of priority setting. We are collaborating a lot with the GFAR, the Global Forum for Agricultural Research, Secretariat in Rome. They have a global uh, observatory on foresight and priority setting. So everybody is trying to collaborate on priority setting. But at the end of the day, I think the danger, I love priority setting, but I think that the danger, that, uh, uh, it could be dangerous to just focus on the methods and have a mechanistic approach to set up a list of priorities that then nobody will agree. I think it's much better to do it bottom up, not so much scientifically, but much more consensus reaching dialogue to see if we can agree on which are the main topics. And if you do the archaeology of the priority exercise done in the last 30 years, you will find always the same four priorities food security, poverty. Health and nutrition may be a little new, and environment, soils, water. So those four priorities are, are with us, and they are going to stay for a long time. So I don't. I think the energy should be devoted on really defining the how to do the research and with whom to do the research to address those priorities instead of spending another year or two developing new methods to set up priorities, which I think uh, could end up in the same results. Okay, thank you very much for having us.